just ahead. I believe we have a very good indication of what happened. 48 Hours provides the most scientific reconstruction of the crime. Okay, we're heading down the Alma Tunnel. Did the paparazzi really play a role? We have motorcycles that are in close proximity with him. They would be involved. And was there a second car? The answer's coming up. still so many mysteries about just what happened inside this tunnel in the crash that killed Princess Diana, her friend Dodi Fayed, and driver Henri Paul. What about the notion that a second car, possibly a Fiat Uno, actually collided with the Mercedes the Princess was in and then sped away? And just how fast was the Mercedes really going? Now, 48 Hours called on some of the world's leading crash investigators to reconstruct what happened using technology superior to what the French have at their disposal. We provided the facts as we know them. The experts provide the analysis. Here's Aaron Moriarty. Do you feel that you know what happened on the early morning hours of August 31st? Within the data available. It is still the mystery. What caused the Mercedes to crash inside the Alma Tunnel? I believe we have a very good indication of what happened. A mystery that engineer Brian McHenry... This is the map of the speed. ...is working to solve. It's like a puzzle. We're trying to solve a puzzle here, and we're asking for the pieces of the puzzle. McHenry is part of a team of crash experts... We begin to see some of the structure... ...and graphic artists that 48 hours hired to reconstruct the accident. It appears to be in the left-hand lane as it approaches the tunnel. This is very early impact. They don't have to depend on eyewitnesses. The witnesses are tire marks on the roadway, glass and debris on the roadway. We have a right side skid mark here. Much of that information is found in the official French police diagram obtained by 48 hours that describes in great detail the evidence at the scene. The witnesses are the car. The car itself is a very good indication of what happened in this. All pieces to the puzzle. This is a geometric description in 3D space. We're representing going down the road. Graphic artist Casey Herbert will build the road. I'm going to bring in the roadway, which here it is. The tunnel. Here are the front faces of the entrance to the tunnel. And the Mercedes, according to McHenry's data. This is information that Brian provided us. And you turn that into pictures. This information drives this model down our road. Analyzing the accident. We're coming down to the Alma Tunnel. Requires first retracing the Paris route the Mercedes took. This is where he could be picking up speed. Along with British accident investigator Murray Mackay. He's got to take this left-hand bend, but it's not that sharp a bend. The problem, of course, is seeing what's in front. Mackay points out hidden hazards on the seemingly ordinary four-lane highway. He's got a row of trees on the right, which are a bit of a blanket to obscure your sight distance. There's a little feeder road that comes in just at the beginning of the dip down into the Alma Tunnel. It's that dip in the road which most likely caused Henri Paul to oversteer as he was approaching the tunnel. You can see that the vehicles going around the curve vanish from your sight. But surprisingly, the evidence shows that the paparazzi may not have been major factors in the accident. Well, the California businessman told Dan Rather he saw motorcyclists surrounding the Mercedes. Brian McHenry sees no evidence that they were still riding alongside the vehicle as it reached the tunnel. The police report does not include any skid marks by any other vehicle, so obviously any vehicle that may have been in proximity must have been far enough away to be able to stop before or get through there before the Mercedes got in this control loss. With the reconstruction now nearly complete, we may be able to finally put to rest what is perhaps the most intriguing question left from the crash. The question of the second car, the mysterious white Fiat Uno. The last pieces of the puzzle are now in place. I can run that as a loop. And the most extensive scientific recreation of what happened in Paris last August is complete. The Mercedes was going 70 miles per hour, the Uno 45. For a closer look, let's break it down. Okay, we're heading down the Alma Tunnel. We just passed the access road. He runs wide on this curve. 
we see the slower moving Uno approaching us. He obviously then sees the Uno, steers to avoid it, gently clips it here, breaking some glass, and then tries to regain control of his vehicle within this single lane. Now he hits the Uno, but he doesn't lose it completely there and actually avoids hitting the first pillar there. Why does he end up hitting a pillar? Well, we're traveling so fast, when he's heading back to his right, he knows the Uno's there, so he overreacts, puts in too much steer, which caused him to go into the pillar number 13. If the Mercedes hit the Fiat before it even got in the tunnel, how did the Fiat manage to drive away and disappear? This is not a significant collision. This is really a brush by. The reconstruction shows something else. Very little damage to the section of the vehicle where Princess Diana was sitting. It's what happened to her inside the car, demonstrated by this crash test video, which best explains why she died. I think if uh, the rear seat occupants had been belted, particularly for Princess Diana in the right rear, then I think she would have had a chance of, of survival. In the end, what may be most extraordinary about the accident is just how ordinary it was. The kind of miscalculation made by drunk drivers every day. He's going too fast, his reactions are poor. He's faced with a situation where, you know, careful judgment is needed. And he got it wrong.